It's everybody's favorite game show, Tasker's Teammate. And as you know, Tasker's Teammate is brought to you by Wegmans Meals to Go. Delicious meals delivered. Download the Wegmans app today. I have a new strategy this week. Oh, I'd like to hear it. I'm going to kick back and think with my feet up. Oh, so you're going to have more blood rush to the brain. And now you're sitting in a hole over there, Steve. Oh, boy, look my out. Don't hard. hurt Wait. yourself. Good God almighty, man. Okay, just easy, easy. Easy. All right, Brownie, hit me. Uh, Okay, here we go. Clue number one for Tasker's teammate. Born in Michigan, I was a small college football star where I earned both academic All-American and first-team All-American honors in the Division II ranks. I was named Conference Co-Player of the Year and was even a finalist for Division II Player of the Year. Ray Bentley. It is not Ray Bentley. Not a bad guess, though. He's a Michigan guy. Yeah, right. That's the only... That's... Yeah. I ultimately signed with the Bills as an undrafted rookie after I did not get an NFL Combine invite during the pre-draft process. I made the 53-man roster as a rookie in 1993. Al Edwards. It is not Al Edwards. I don't think Al's a Michigan guy anymore. I don't, I don't know that, but I, I don't, don't think so. I think he was a draft pick, too. So I'm, He was. Uh, clue I'm number trying, three. The time frame is what This could jog your memory, All right. because you tend to remember these things that happen on the field more than the stuff off the field. In my first training camp with the Bills, I got into two minor scrapes with teammates. I was accused of a late hit on Chris Walsh that knocked the ear pads out of his helmet. <laughs> And then I got in a scuffle with fullback Greg Patera on a goal line play. He thought he got into the end zone. I didn't agree. Tim Smiley? It is not Tim Smiley. Got to be a DB. Matt Darby. Not Matt Darby. I was once quoted as saying, quote, I'm going to hit you. That's what I'm out there for. I like a lot of contact. I'm not going to back down from anyone. I'm just out there to do my part, end quote. That sound like anybody? Could be anybody, really. Who who would fit that description? Man, that's a tough one. Yeah, it could fit a lot of players. So maybe that's that doesn't help mindset. you. All. You want me to move yeah. on to the next? Clue? Yes, keep, keep, I pass on that. Yeah, okay. Here okay. we go. Clue number five. Spending my early years on special teams for the Bills, Coach Bruce DeHaven once said of me, "Quote: He's a handful. They have a hard time blocking him. I'd like to get him out on the punt team, but the guys that are playing there right now are doing a really good job. So he's on Matt. kickoff, not punt. It's I don't not know if like that helps you at all. Matt Monger or." Oh, Tom busted Tom out the buzzer. Oh, oh, oh. He loves that. It's it a rough room day. out there, man. Uh, all right, go ahead. Keep okay, going. Okay, so next one. After three years with the Bills, I signed with the New England Patriots oh. and immediately became a starter after finding it hard to crack the defensive lineup for Buffalo. How could that not ring a bell for you? Nice. That is impossible for me not to remember that. I know. I know. You're getting frustrated now. So I'll give you this one, which should get you there. After just one season in New England, I decided to pursue a career in professional wrestling, beginning in Michigan's All-World Wrestling League before stints with Total Nonstop Action Wrestling and the WWE. It's Monty. It is Monty Brown. Monty Brown. There you go. Monty, Monty Brown. Brown. Where is most popular oh, there he is. oh, look, he's got the man. Oh, no. Monty Brown. <laughs> I did not know you. I forgot all about your New England. I forgot all about your New England stint. I had no oh, idea. Come on, brother. <laughs> man, oh, man. Monty, man. Don't let me see. What an act. He was, Monty's built like an action figure. He's perfect for pro wrestling, man. How you doing, man? Good to see you, Steve. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. That's awesome. <laughs>
Can you uh, man, it's a pleasure. Can you, Good to can see you Can you refresh our back, man? It's about time. Yeah. You, you got to refresh our memory about the ear pad hit on Chris <laughs> Walsh <laughs> in training camp, man. Well, John Butler no. was quoted as saying he watched the tape over about 10 times watching this guy's <laughs> ear pads fly all over oh the gosh. field. That's hard to do. Across, he came across the middle. He shouldn't have been there, and I loaded him up. And I was like, you know, this is what I have <laughs> yeah. to do to make this football team. And his helmet actually exploded. It, yeah. it literally exploded. <laughs> and yeah. I've never seen anybody's ear pads go flying, mouthpiece go flying. But there was, you know, Yeah, there was, was so much equipment. Moments. There was so much equipment laying on the field, it looked like a yard sale. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was and that was one of those like, ooh, wow. Even like even in our meeting, we watched and I was in a receiver meeting. I was with Chris in the next day. When you're watching it's like going, dude, <laughs> you all right? <laughs> it's like he's like and I Chris hope. Chris had a really nice career. He ended up in Minnesota, had played Minnesota, a long time. Yeah, he did well. He did Yeah, really he played good. a yeah. long time. He was a tough kid. And that was the one thing about him. He was really smart and really tough. Which he got up and played the rest of you know and played for us and stuff, but man oh man, yeah, that was a that was a moment. Yeah. How you yeah. doing, Mike? What are you up to? Oh man, I'm doing really well. I'm 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 uh, back in the Serengeti, but uh, <laughs> I've got a personal training business. I'm a director of uh, personal training and, and uh, athletics, working with kids, doing my thing, man, all over the place. Really, I'm awesome. a man of many hats. Very yeah. nice. He was doing the whole wrestling thing. He mentioned Serengeti because that's what he was known as, one of his nicknames. Oh, yeah. And then also known as the Alpha Male, Marcus the Von Kaur. The Alpha Male. The yeah. Alpha Male. Yeah, the, I, that, yes, was, uh, that was fantastic. <laughs> we got I some footage that. here. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, we used to hang out in the, uh, go out in the way. It was fun, man. That, those were the days right there. Yeah. Those were the days. Yeah. It was yeah. Being, in, being in Belo, man, that was a young kid coming from a, a D2 school. You guys took me in. You didn't care where you're from as long as you were there and playing hard. And I, I embraced that. And that whole yeah. Bill's Mafia, Bill's Mafia going crazy in Buffalo, that's, that's what I was all about because they enjoyed that physicality. And I'm still that, that same guy from Ferris. Oh, by the way, shout out to Jay-Z. Shout out to Justin Zimmer, another Ferris State football player. Oh, there you go. That's here for FSU, the real FSU, baby. That, and that I'll say this, can, too. That kid can run. Yeah. They clocked him yeah. on GPS, Monty, at 18 miles an hour running downfield last year. Oh, nice. I mean, that's I, uh, moving for a I'll big man. Around. You think about Monty <laughs> came in in 1993, and picture a roster in the NFL. They'd already been to, you know, 91 and 92 uh, Super Bowl. Monty comes in. How hard do you think that roster was to make for As an, an undrafted. undrafted rookie free agent? Yeah. And Monty, Monty did it. Yeah. He made yeah. A, a Super Bowl roster in the middle of that Super Bowl run. Yeah. <laughs> that's hard to do. And, uh, Played really well for that for for us and uh, wow, wow, that's great. That's awesome. It's great, great, yeah. to, great to see you, man. The biggest, the, I think, the biggest issue for you, Monty, and you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but they had kind of plugged in some young inside linebackers in that three four right before you got there. So you're a young guy trying to get on the field on defense, and they've got some young vets in front of you. It was really hard to crack the lineup on defense, right? It, it, it really was because uh, shout out to to uh, General Mark's Patton, Go Go, yeah. uh, Mark Maddox, all those guys that were there before I was. Um, but I had never even played special teams before. But you tell me, hey, run down the field and knock that guy out. I was like, OK, I'll do that. So <laughs> right. It was whatever it takes to make the make the team. And honestly, I didn't really even know any different. And I didn't even at that time, I didn't look back and see what a what a tough time it would be making that team i just said i'm there and this is what i'm gonna do i was playing yeah. with house money and i'm gonna go all in and i say it's true and i say this to young people all the time too you know money because all these young kids say yeah i'll do anything to make it in the nfl i'll do anything i think but they get there and they say well i ain't gonna cover kicks <laughs> right they don't want right. to do it they want to play linebacker they want to play db or sure. tight end or whatever they i want to play down a distance and, and they and you can't convince them that if they cover kicks well enough you hang in there and get a chance later on to play that stuff, and they and it really is amazing that young players. Because let's face it, like you, you were at the top of the level of football division. You were a player of the year there, and it's hard to be told you're going to have to cover kicks or do something other than you were good at at the college level. And a lot of guys don't make that adjustment. They won't make that decision. You did it really quickly, 
and it gave you a chance to put together a really nice pro career. It really did, Steve. And, and, and you know from a, a career in being the best at what you did, you were the best gunner, the best special team guy, then came in when you got plugged in, did your wide receiver thing. But what people don't understand and what these young kids, hey, sometimes you got to take a step back, set the pride and the attitude in, in the background, go out there and do what it takes to make the team. Once you make the team, now, okay, now I'm going to get, get put into this position. I'll get put into that position. But if it's covering kicks, uh, punt, special team, that is a third of of the uh, the game as a whole. So yeah. I didn't have a problem with it. Now, don't get me wrong. I definitely wanted to get on the field and play oh, yeah. some defense. And when I got my opportunity to start in Buffalo, I did. But, you know, I just enjoyed being a part of that program. And I couldn't imagine starting anywhere else but where I was because yeah. I was literally taken right in by – by uh, Biscuit, DT, and all Steve, right. all those guys, you know, and they just took me in, and I'm just so grateful and so thankful I got the opportunity to play there. Monty, yeah. is it true that when you signed with New England, you did it with an eye towards a wrestling career already? Had you already begun to consider that? Because I saw, and, you know, we can take Wikipedia for what it's worth here, so I'm, I'm not counting on the accuracy of that as opposed to your firsthand account, but... They claim that one of the reasons you signed with New England was because it was near uh, the, the Wrestling Federation's <laughs> headquarters in Connecticut. Is there validity to that, Monty? I need to know the real there, story here. There's there's a joking validity to that. I, I, absolutely. When I when I went there, honestly, from the time I was seven or eight, I always said that I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be a professional football player and I'm going to be a professional wrestler. So those two careers were already in my mind. They're already locked in. And when I did go to New England, you know, it being that close to uh, WWE, I kind of jokingly, that's how they would get the conversation started. You know, they would uh, converse with me about, oh, well, what happened with, with wrestling and what happened with this? And I could run it all down to them, you know. So it was just as interesting for me to talk about wrestling as football. They were all one and the same. And actually, my whole character, the alpha male, is basically that young kid that came to Buffalo, come, yeah. coming out of college, just running over everything, going nuts, physicality. That's just me turned up 10,000. And, yeah. and, and how, is, how is wrestling most like professional football? And how is it most, how does it, you know, contrast with football the most? What's, what's the same? What applies to professional wrestling and professional football? And what's so different between the two? Well, I would say uh, I would say that the the most that that is similar is just the adrenaline, the physicality, the the mindset that you go into it that you know I'm going to go out here and I'm going to perform at my utmost best, and that's what I enjoy doing. I I still have that you know it, within me, and I would say the the probably the the, the biggest difference would be ooh, um, the setting. Uh, the, the circumstance, um, you have to kind of follow, actually you have to follow more within what's going on as far as what you're, you're, you're told and the direction that a situation is supposed to go in. And, um, the bottom line with both is you just go out there and let it loose and you give the, give the people what they want and you perform, you have to perform. And that's yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. And you were, I got to tell you, Monty, you were the alpha male coming into Buffalo. <laughs> Steve, I still am. He is you are, I yes. and I am him. You the still alpha are. male is he, and he most definitely, Steve, is me. There you go. <laughs> Monty, thanks, man. It's awesome to see you. Great, great, great catching up. Good luck to you. And I hope we cross paths soon. Come back to Buffalo. Come back to Buffalo for a game. I am definitely, Steve, because I can still feel it. I still feel it. <laughs> I feel it in the air, Steve. Coming at night. I feel it. All right. Good. All right. He's going to hold you to that, Monty. Careful now. Steve will hold you to that. I'll see you at home on Monday night when the, when the <laughs> Patriots are coming in town. You're old, both old teams. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. All right. Thank you All right. for Great having to, you, Good to have you, Monty. Thank you for joining us. What's up, man? All right, I will. All right, that's Monty Thank Brown, you. Bill's former linebacker, and the alpha male. He's tremendous. Marcus Von Kor was his uh, wrestling name.